Hey everybody, this is uh, my playthrough of the Rise of the Rune Lords through the uh, the Pathfinder adventure card game. And this is, uh, well, it used to be Burnt Offerings. Well, no, it is still Burnt Offerings. And in Burnt Offerings, the scenarios listed are Attack on Sandpoint, which we've just defeated in the previous video, and Local Heroes. Of course, a couple more after that, but we're up to Local Heroes now. So the Local Heroes card is the thing where we get our locations from, and it defines our villains and henchmen. So there's a couple of things to take note of there. But before we begin that, we actually have some admin to do from the previous um, scenario. So in the previous scenario, we earned some a, a skill feat, and a skill feat is listed on the bat, or the skills are listed on the character's uh, little character card. And a skill feat is uh, any checkbox, the leftmost checkbox in the skill section, which is universally a plus one to essentially any attribute. So, and we can choose, from what I understand, we can choose one of these. So I can add a plus one to one of his feats, one of his uh, attributes. So I've, I've thought some about this, and I, I, feel like, I feel like the smart thing probably would be to give, it, to give him a plus one in his wisdom. Except that his wisdom is so darned low that I feel like a lot of times when we're, when we're looking at things that require wisdom, they're like six and seven and eight and things like that. And he's got a D4. So even if I get him up to a plus two to his wisdom, that's a maximum possible roll of six, which is kind of, the, I feel like, one of the lowest thresholds for a successful wisdom. So I just don't know if that's like what I want to sort of waste his bonus on. So I'm thinking of just giving him an intelligence boost. Because his intelligence, that seems to come up every, every so often. And giving him a one boost there could be good. The other appeal, the, the other appealing op option here is his constitution, which can get all the way up to a plus four. So that kind of feels cool. But constitution hasn't come up that often. So I'm, I'm kind of feeling like intelligence might be the way to go. So that's what I'm doing for him. Intelligence bonus for Valeros. And for Sione, D4 is her lowest, and she can get a plus one there. And once again, that feels useless to give her such a low score any kind of bonus. However, in this case, because she's going to be in the same location as, as Valeros, he can usually grant her a D4 bonus anyway. So if she does have to go into a strength combat, She'll be rolling 2d4, and then a free plus 1 just kind of seems like it would be useful. So that's what I'm going to do for Sione, is give her a plus 1 to her, her strength. That's their, their bonuses taken care of. Now we need to reconstruct their decks. So at the end, between scenarios, you have to go back to their card and look at what their deck is permitted to contain in terms of the number. And in this case, she's got three spells, three items, four allies, and five blessings. That's what her deck should contain. She's acquired a bunch of cards over the course of the last scenario, so she's got more than what she's allowed to have. So we need to filter through these and get her down to th three, four, four, and five, or whatever it is. So I'm going to address the one that I care about the most first, which are her spells. And it actually looks like I don't have that many to choose from. I thought I had... I know that she gained... She did gain a spell, I thought. Oh, she should have arcane armor. Absolutely, she should have arcane armor. Where is arcane armor? Did I just miss that? I must have mixed it in on accident with the discard deck. So this is the discard pile from the, the previous scenario. There it is. 
Yep, I'll bet I just mixed it in with that deck on accident. Okay, so she's got four spells to choose from, and she's only got three allowed right now in her deck. So I liked having a well, force missile, definitely, because that's an attack spell. Arcane armor is useful because it reduces damage by two, and it's rechargeable. Uh, invisibility is great because she can evade a combat. She can just choose not to do that. And then there's mirror image. If you're dealt damage by a monster during your turn, you can discard this card to roll a d4, and on the result other than one, reduce damage to zero. So that means that if she takes like eight damage, she could roll a die, and potentially she has a three, uh, a, you know, three and four chance of just not taking any damage at all, which seems really powerful. Until you think about arcane armor, which kind of mitigates it entirely, or not entirely, by two, and then invisibility, which essentially mitigates it by not even making it a thing. I can just see myself having a d4 and rolling it, and rolling a 1, and taking suddenly all of the damage. I would like to keep them all, but I cannot. So I have to make a choice here. And because this is a fun playthrough, I guess I'll get rid of Arcane Armor and take my chances with Mirror Image. It's got that potential of being really exciting, and that's what we play games for. So, seems like a bad idea, but at the same time, also a very good idea. Items. How many items does she have? Well, she can only have three. So, let's find out what she's got to choose from. Does she have items? She must have. Okay, Blast, Bracers of Protection, and a po Potion of Fortitude still. Well, there's her three. That's that's what she's got in her in her deck, so that's what she gets. And then she got she's got four allies and five blessings. So five blessings. Let's see what Lamash 2 does. Uh, Lamash 2 is an evil god. I, I don't really feel super comfortable about having that blessing in the deck, but we'll see. Discard this card to add one die to a check. Bury it to add two die to defeat a monster. Or discard to explore. That's pretty flexible. I don't know. Maybe it's okay. So we got guide and burglar. Guard, troubadour, standard bearer and Sage for the allies. So, and then we just got a bunch of blessings of the gods. So yeah, I think it's definitely smart to mix that up a little bit for Sioni. So she'll have at least another blessing other than just a generic blessings of the gods. Not that blessing of the gods is bad, it's just, it is, we've got a lot of them. So we've got a bunch of allies. Burglar is good because he helps with stealth and disable checks. And that, that just tends to be very good. Sage is okay. Intelligence and Wisdom. Wisdom is not uh, one of Sioni's great strengths. Of course, her strength is even lower, so it would be good to have a standard bearer hanging around. And then I, I need one more. Dex or Charisma. That Charisma is her... that's where she shines. So I don't feel like that's super important. And then we've got the Guide, who could recharge this card. Survival. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so that's her deck. That's her new deck. And I'll shuffle that before I begin the next the next scenario. So Valeros, uh, similarly, needs to manage his deck. I don't think he... I think this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, five weapons. How many allies? Okay, well, five weapons. Let's do one thing at a time. So mace, longsword, longsword... Dagger, short sword. I think that was five. Yeah, I think I think these are the, his original five anyway. So that's his five weapons. It's that's pretty simple. Armor is three, so I think he's all he's got is a wooden shield, uh, wooden shield and chainmail. Yep, that's all he's got to choose from. Again, his original hand. Two items. Let's see what items he has. He's a potion of hiding. And a mattock, I think, is an item. Yep. Two allies and three blessings. So he can get a night watch for perception. That just doesn't seem all that useful. For a standard bearer for non-combat strength and constitution. I feel like he has that 
more or less taken care of. So maybe just add the guide and then three standard blessings. So his deck is actually all, very nearly the, the exact same deck that he started with, which, which kind of says something. I mean, it, it, it tells us that we're not acquiring a lot of cards, which is not great. We want to build up our deck, and it, it really feels like we haven't done that very effectively. I'm going to just make sure that the blessing, the, the timer deck is still 30, so that we're not uh, cheating at all. 30. Okay, so we're, we're at 30 for our timer deck. And then we need to look at our scenario. So the scenario for local heroes for two players involves, again, four locations, a general store, the woods, the waterfront, and the academy. Well, I have assembled those beforehand so that they're ready to go almost. So there's the woods. There's the general store. Here's the academy. Uh, and then for the waterfront, I will say that I'm, I'm taking a, some liberties with the card game that I'm not really supposed to take. So this is non-canonical. But for the waterfront, I just I couldn't resist to be a little bit more thematic. So the waterfront needs monsters and barriers and things like that, and, and allies. And what I've done is I've, I've cheated a little bit, and I'm using some cards out of the Skull and Shackles set, which technically they, they make no claim that the different sets, the different adventure decks, are compatible with each other. So this is Skull and Shackles. I shouldn't be using it with Rune Lord, but I've chosen some cards that were thematic to being on the waterfront, and I, I think it'll be okay that I'm playing them. So all the monsters are from Skull and Shackles. One of the allies is, and I think both of the barriers are. And in my experience, it, it hasn't really mattered. I mean, it matters in some on some cards just wouldn't work. Like there are ship cards, for instance, in, sh in Skulls and Shackles that just don't exist in this deck. So it wouldn't make sense to use a card that that referred to a ship, for instance. But some of them are very fun and very very challenging, actually. So I think it'll be okay. So aside from that little deviation from from the rules, we've also got a global rule for local heroes. If you acquire an ally you may immediately attempt to close your location. If you fail to acquire an ally, discard the top card of the Blessings deck. To win the scenario, close all locations. What that just told us is that if we draw, if we're exploring at a location and we find an ally card and we fail to get it, then we have to tick down our timer deck. So that could be, that could be bad. The good news is that there is no villain in this scenario. The only win condition is to close all locations. And you can close a location when you meet an ally. But that also means that we're free to wander from location to location. We're never going to run into a henchman. We're never going to run into a villain. We're just going to be exploring. So as long as we keep an eye on that Blessings deck, this should be a relatively simple scenario. The, the danger is that monsters exist, and so monsters could force us to discard down, and that could run into problems uh, in terms of health points. If we, if we complete this scenario, each character draws a random ally from the box, so everyone's going to get a free ally at the end of this. That's cool. So yeah, like I say, there are no villains and no henchmen, but you do put one random ally into each location. So I still need to do that. So I've got I've drawn random randomly four allies. So one of them is a burglar, one's a night watch, one's a toad, and one's a night watch. So I'll just kind of I don't know mix those up. It doesn't really matter. I mean they're just allies. It's not that big of a deal. And of course I will shuffle these locations before I actually start to play. And I think I'm set up now. So Valeros has a bonus to his intelligence. Sioni has an intel a, a, a bonus to her strength. And the locations are all set up. So next video, I will start round one of scenario two.